Welcome back to the next episode of our Let's Play Crystal Isles live series. Now, in the last episode, we risked our lives several times to tame these dung beetles and uh, eventually died of stupidity after a bunch of miraculous saves. So today we're going to start by doing a rescue mission and see if we can get our Tyranodon, dung beetle, and all of our stuff back because there is definitely a Tyrannosaur less than a block away from our Tyranodon, and we'll see if we can get there in time. We're also going to show you guys a really awesome place to get lots of obsidian in the jungle, which is a really convenient location and probably one of the most safe places to get obsidian on the Crystal Isles map. And then we'll wrap up this three episode expedition by showing you guys why it was worth dying for these dung beetles, because we are eventually going to be able to have unlimited power and food with just two dung beetles and a whole lot of poop. So be sure to watch this whole episode, it will be very helpful and pretty fun, and I think you'll enjoy it a lot. Please give it a thumbs up if you do, drop a comment, and let us know what you like to name these dung beetles, and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and ring that bell to enable all notifications because we've got lots more episodes coming out really soon, and you won't want to miss those. So, let's get started. All right, now the last episode of this series, we left off right here, and uh, we had just managed to tame two dung beetles in a really dangerous area right next to a T-Rex, and we almost died several times. If you missed that episode, definitely go back and watch that, but uh, we'll have a link in the description of this video. But at the end of that episode, this happened. Yeah, I was trying to show you guys something in the map and fell off the Pteranodon. I think I hit the wrong button while I was closing the map, because I'm still getting used to this keyboard, which is just a little bit different than the the other one. So uh, we are respawning and we are going to mount a rescue expedition on this episode and get back there as fast as possible. So we'll skip ahead for a second because I've got to find enough keratin and chitin throughout our storage boxes and uh, hopefully we'll be able to take this spare pteranodon out and rescue our good one. Now you may have wondered why I tamed so many pteranodons uh, as we've been leveling up and most of it is just because they were so convenient and easy to tame where they happen to be, but it's really good to have spare pteranodons because it's really easy to lose them. So uh, we happen to have enough chitin and keratin to make one more pteranodon saddle, but if we lose this guy, we're going to be grounded and have to hunt a bunch of stuff just to be able to fly again. We do have another really cool backup pteranodon. It's blue, I don't want to lose it, but hopefully we'll make it out there and uh, be able to rescue our pteranodon and dung beetle. So uh, rather than making you watch the entire time flying over there we're just gonna skip right to the jungle plateau and uh, this is actually right in sight of that beach so you can see that waterfall in the distance that's actually where we lost our pteranodon and I haven't seen a notification that the pteranodon died yet so there is a chance it's still alive now when a pteranodon is abandoned like that when you die it'll either fly and hover on the edge of the map tile if it can't land anymore or it might actually land I think I see it right there oh, Oh, and I see the T-Rex right next to it. This is bad. This could be really bad. Okay, let me whistle for it to follow me and hope that it can come up here. Oh gosh, the T-Rex just ate something. Now he is turning this way. Yeah, get out of there, buddy. Get out of there. Okay, we're going to uh, try to get him to stop in midair. And okay, so that T-Rex is busy for a second. I'm going to try to swoop down and grab this dung beetle before I lose it. And yep, okay. Going to get back airborne as fast as we can. Now... T-Rexes are really big, so you'd think they're really slow, but they can actually cover a lot of ground very quickly. And uh, I'm going to try to land on this plateau, because it didn't look like there was anything deadly over here. i got to recharge my stamina. I am almost out, because this Pteranodon does not have a lot of stamina. So, uh, I've got my Dung Beetle and my Pteranodon. They are still alive. I can't believe it. Uh, they, they, they got so lucky, because that T-Rex is, like, right there. He probably would have eaten that Pteranodon by now. And I do want to take these guys back back to safety. Now, I've still got my stuff down here, and there's that Quetzal that caused this whole problem because I opened up my map to show you guys where I spotted that, but uh, we're going to have our Pteranodon follow us back to safety up in this little jungle plateau. We have a uh, little outpost up here, and if I can get him back up there, we'll be fine. Oh, and there's that Alpha Raptor that uh, actually didn't try to eat us while we were getting some Plant Species X seeds on that little swampy peninsula, and uh, he was too busy eating all of his friends but it looks like he ate them all and now there is no friends left and he's all alone so that's what you get for being a jerk right 
Now, a couple episodes ago, we built a little outpost here in the jungle, and it is at the very top of the tallest plateau in the jungle area. The reason we wanted to be as high up as possible is because there are aggressive wyverns that spawn in this jungle. And I don't think they go this high up. I've never seen one up above the valley. But if you go down into the valley, you might get chased around and killed by wyverns. And they can fly, which is a real problem. A lot of stuff can kill you much more easily if it can fly around and chase you. And those guys are no joke. They will like one shot our low level pteranodons most likely. So we're gonna drop off this dung beetle. We'll feed them, get back on my good pteranodon and uh, we'll go out and see if we can get my stuff. So uh, we got all of our stuff stowed safely away, but we still have all of the stuff that was on our body that's back over here on this beach. And that T-Rex is still running around rampaging and destroying everything. I'm not sure exactly how long that stuff is gonna last before it despawns but we've got to be pretty quick about it it's not the absolute oh there's the Rex again eating everything in sight okay so he just chased off a pteranodon and looks like he's got one tech parasaur in the way before he gets up the beach to where I am so hopefully that'll keep him busy long enough Oop, yep he sees it he is on the hunt and he is about to eat that thing so Let's rest up for just a second, get our stamina back, because we're going to need it. And I missed that ledge, yay. All right, here we go. Recharging our stamina, and uh, wow, he already ate that tech parasaur. What a jerk. I was actually kind of hoping to hunt that thing, because they give you some good electronics. And we'll be using that in the near future. Okay, good. He seems to be turning around. Looks like there's a couple more snacks for him to eat before he comes over and tries to eat us. So yeah, all right, he seems pretty busy. Now, T-Rexes can move really fast. You don't want to underestimate them, so uh, definitely want to be quick about this. All right, got my stuff, and, you know, I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab some meat, too. Waste not, want not, right? So uh, just got some meat from me because our dung beetles are actually pretty hungry. As far as I know, okay, good. He is uh, still busy eating everything, and we made it out safely. We got our stuff back. So as far as I know, dung beetles don't actually get enough food from eating poop that uh, you can keep them alive. So we're going to have to give them actual meat. They'll also eat spoiled meat. But uh, I guess I'll give them a taste of me, and uh, hopefully they won't like it and come back for more. So, yeah, that got dark, right? Now, the next thing I want to do here is actually show you guys where to get some really easy obsidian. Now, the main reason I built that little outpost there, not only because it's convenient and close to make a bunch of expeditions for this stuff we've been doing in the last couple episodes, but check it out. There are loads of obsidian up here on this mountain. I already grabbed about 100 obsidian up here, and I'm going to show you on the map where this actually is. And I'll show you on the map, and my gloves will cover everything so you can't see the map. There we go. Really kind of a love-hate relationship with those ghillie gloves. They're keeping me from burning to death. But uh, that's the spot right here, and it's uh, about as safe as you can find obsidian on the Crystal Isles, as far as I can tell. This stuff is actually a lot of obsidian up here. If we had an ankylosaur, we'd have all the obsidian we could possibly use up here. And, uh, you know, you do get some Carnos, Therizinosaurs, stuff like that that'll spawn up here, but it's really easy to deal with anything that's not able to fly. Oh, oh, hey, perfect example. All right, so let me show you what to do when you get attacked up here. All right, come on over here, little Dilo. Oh no, I'm so scared I'm getting attacked by this vicious predator. So uh, you just fly over the edge, and uh, since it's a nice little plateau, there's edges everywhere around here, and uh, we'll just let him just jump off a cliff. And uh, problem solved. So if you get attacked by like a Therizinosaur or Carno or anything like that up here, you just get it to run off a cliff, and then the whole place is all yours. So uh, we've got a full load of obsidian, and I'm going to load this up on my Pteranodons, and we'll basically get as much obsidian as these two Pteranodons can carry. So now I'm suddenly happy to have two of these guys so we can carry some more back to the base because we'll be using that to make polymer pretty soon and that'll get us more cryopods and help us get an electrical system going we'll make some generators and uh you know do a lot of good stuff with that obsidian so we're going to grab a little bit more but we'll skip ahead so uh you don't have to watch us just grabbing a bunch of rocks I figure you guys probably appreciate this not being like a 20 minute video of us harvesting a whole bunch of obsidian, but I mean, let me know in the comments if you guys prefer 
skipping stuff that's a little slower, like gathering rocks and obsidian, things like that, or if you guys would actually like to watch all of that and uh, have it be a much longer video. So drop a comment, let me know your opinions. I'd love to hear from you guys about that. So we have got both of our pteranodons as loaded up as possible without slowing them down. By the way, if your pteranodon ever flies slowly, check its weight because it might be overweight, which makes them fly a lot slower and they actually use a lot more stamina to fly too. So pro tip, lighten the load if you're going too slow. And uh, we are going to have to make this a somewhat more slow flight because our other pteranodon is pretty well maxed out on his weight. Poor little guy, he's our noob pteranodon and just has too low uh, weight carrying capacity. So this will be a long trip and we'll go ahead and skip some of this too because uh, we're already pretty well along the way to that uh, mountain where we live. You can see it straight off in the distance and uh, we'll be flying right over there. But as soon as we finish that, we are going to show you guys what to do with dung beetles and how to use them to get unlimited oil and fertilizer, which can be used for all kinds of really helpful stuff later on. So we'll be right back. And we are finally on the home stretch. It's been a long flight and a very slow one, but we are back on our mountain where we live. And you can see our nice little house and all of our dinos here waiting for us. But honestly, I can't wait to put all these dinos in cryopods because uh, they're taking up a lot of space and I don't feel super comfortable having all of them just out here in the open. So uh, a lot of people asked me on the comments on the last episode when we were actually picking up dung beetles why it was worth so much effort to get these dumb little bugs. So uh, we'll be back in just a second after I pick up the other dung beetle. I won't show you that because it's going to be a long flight too. But we'll show you why dung beetles are so amazing and helpful and will completely change our lives once we have a couple of these. So we'll be right back. All right, so first of all, just so you guys know, I'm gonna be picking up lots of dinosaur poop throughout the rest of this series, and that's actually going to become one of the most valuable resources in our adventure, as crazy as that sounds, but dung beetles are that good. So we're gonna show you guys why dung beetles are so amazing, but first let's just see what this guy wants for imprinting, and he wants superior kibble. Yeah, not gonna happen right now. And uh, we moved the uh, pteranodons out of the house because they were just getting too big and taking up too much space, but now we're gonna going to show you guys why dung beetles are so amazing. But check the link in the description because we have an entire guide which explains this in much more detail and that'll be really helpful for you. So the first thing we did with our dung beetles is we put a bunch of feces in their inventory so they're carrying it around and they have been converting that for some time into oil and fertilizer and we're going to have an unlimited supply of that. But the first thing you need to know is a dung beetle has to be on wander otherwise it won't do anything at all totally useless if it's not wandering. Now when it does wander, they are escape artists and they'll try to climb out every window and door and they're really good at it. So you gotta keep a real close eye on them. Now if you put them in a wooden cage, that's actually extremely useful because it'll keep them from escaping. But if you've got a good solid base like this one, we should be able to keep them inside as long as we don't leave the doors open. Otherwise, we'll find them like, you know, swimming around in the ocean at some point. Now, the important stat for dung beetles is actually weight. Don't really need to worry about anything else, but that allows them to carry more poop. Now another important thing to note is they will convert one thing of every type of poop into fertilizer and oil about every 15 minutes. But there's actually four different types of feces. There is human, which is what you poop, or small monkeys. There is a small, medium, and large feces, depending on the size of the dinosaur that's pooping. And it will convert one of each type into fertilizer and oil. So if you keep all four varieties in its inventory, every 15 minutes you'll get four sets of fertilizer and oil. So it's a good idea to balance out that poop and make sure it's got a good even distribution of different types of poop in its inventory. So we'll do that and let that guy wander for a while. And we'll take a look at this guy. He's also doing a great job converting a bunch of oil and uh, fertilizer out of this poop. 
Now, we're going to be able to put the oil and some uh, hide into our forge, which we usually use for uh, smelting down metal, and it'll actually turn that into gasoline, which we're going to use to power our fabricator, and pretty soon we'll have generators that actually run on gasoline. So pretty soon we'll have an entire base powered by dino and unicorn poop. Yep, that's how I roll. Also in the next episode, we're going to do some extreme gardening and make some plants plant X turrets and beef up our garden so we can grow all the tranks we need to knock out really big dangerous dinos. And we'll also set up a kill station down in the swamp to get unlimited dinosaur meat and hide, so that's going to be super helpful. And in the next episode, I saw something on this mountain that absolutely shocked me, and you guys won't believe what that turns out to be. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and ring that bell to enable all notifications, because you are not going to want to miss the next episode of this series. Also, if you have missed any of this series, check the link in the description. There's an entire playlist with every episode, and a lot of really fun stuff we've done so far. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up and drop us a comment to let us know any comments and we also need to name these two dung beetles. So give us a suggestion for what you'd like to name them, and we'll consider that to uh, go ahead and name them for the rest of this series. So until next time, I hope you all stay safe, have fun, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media so your friends can enjoy it too. And make sure you subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to enable all notifications because we have lots of awesome new guides, tips, tricks, live streams, and let's plays for ARK and other awesome games coming soon and you won't want to miss any of that. We already have lots more fun and helpful videos just like this one, so check out the links at the end of this video to keep watching. You can also chat with other gamers if you join our channel's Discord at the link in the description. If you want to earn great rewards while supporting this channel, click the join link next to the subscribe button for more information about our channel memberships. We want to give a big thank you to some of our biggest supporters of this channel, Sabo0283, Cole Parmenter, Emmy Fisher, Wolf Girl Be Like, Kelly Razjak, and Ashley Owens. Thank you all so much for everything you do to make this channel possible. So until next time, we hope you have fun on your own video game adventures, and we, we will see you, see you in our, our next video. video.